deep within the atom lies the nucleus. This tiny ball is minuscule compared to the rest of the atom, but contains almost all of its mass. Made of protons and neutrons, the nucleus controls exactly what type of element the, the atom is. Both nuclear fusion and nuclear fission change this nucleus to release energy. Nuclear fission is what is currently used in nuclear power stations. This involves very heavy atoms, such as uranium, with massive nuclei and causing them to split apart. To cause this to happen, additional neutrons are usually fired at the nucleus, causing it to become unstable. The nucleus then has a chance to split into two smaller nuclei and release several neutrons. These other neutrons can then go on to cause other atoms to undergo fission. This process releases massive amounts of energy for very small amounts of fuel. However, it can be very unsafe, as each fission event can cause several other events to occur. This can lead to a chain reaction, as is what is used in the nuclear bomb. Nuclear fusion, although it sounds similar, is actually very different. Here, we are actually combining smaller nuclei to produce larger ones. If we look at the nuclear stability curve, we can see that it peaks at iron 56. Combining any nuclei which are smaller will release energy. Likewise, splitting any nuclei which are heavier will also release energy. Fission splits the larger nuclei, while fusion combines the smaller one. Combining nuclei is very difficult. This is because the nuclei are positively charged, and so repel one another when they get close. However, if one can get them exceptionally close, a new type of force kicks in, known as the strong force. This force has a very, very small range, but, as the name suggests, is very strong. This binds the two nuclei together, resulting in the release of energy. This process is done in the sun, using the sun's immense gravity and pressure to compress the nuclei together. On Earth, we've been trying to replicate this process using a variety of methods. Tokamaks such as JET and ITIR use magnetic fields to confine the plasma and compress it together. Other methods involve high-energy lasers to compress the plasma. Our method uses electrostatic forces to cause the nuclei to combine at very high velocities and hopefully fuse. Fuel for fusion is also exceptionally common, with trillions of tons available on Earth. It is also significantly safer, as it has no chain reactions, and it's very clean, producing little nuclear waste and no carbon dioxide. Thus, it would be a perfect energy source for the future.